Hi, nice to be, uh, be with you today. Um, I'm going to talk about the insurer's role in enhancing development of green growth. Um, and I also do not have a point because I'm using PowerPoints. Uh, but uh, also before I, I go into the presentation, I like to, this is what I'm going to cover or uh, address a little bit. I'm just going to do, explain my background because I come from the two worlds that were mentioned today. Um, a little bit about the, the unsustainable development and the implication for insurers. Um, and uh, Evan Mills is a, a scholar that has been uh, doing research on the insurance uh, in this context. And then I'm going to briefly mention four papers that I've published in a very good journals uh, that address this from a different uh, perspective. Uh, one is about the insurance role in enhancing development and utilization of environmentally sound technologies. And then I will talk about the, the insurance business model as a closed loop insurance model, uh, a little bit about the role of uh, insurance in, in uh, fulfilling climate commitments, how they can support that, and, uh, and then a little bit about their actions, uh, and then a little, maybe the uh, role of other financial institutions. Um, so my background is uh, in business, um, I have a business degree from Peverest, uh, which is a uh, university here, a uh, small one. Then I have an MBA in Global Management from Thunderbird School of Global Management and a PhD from the School of Business. So my background is, uh, educational background is business and a global uh, business also. But then. Um, I actually come from the business. I, if we start from the bottom, I, I used to work for insurance companies from uh, 1992 until 2006. So I have been working for the insurance sector for 14 years. Uh, also as an, a consultant and then I uh, went uh, back after the company was sold three times in three years. I decided to change a route and then I did the postdoc, uh, the PhD and the, the postdoc. But I'm also a board member of um, a pension fund so I'm still um, in the, the business sector a little bit as well. And uh, I'm also a mem uh, board member of the Institute for Business Research here at the University of uh, Iceland and assistant professors within the environment and natural resources. And the, the, actually this was not right in, in, and that's the complexity of being in an interdisciplinary arena, then, then it's all, always get mixed up where you come from, but I, my position is uh, tied also linked to the school of business. So this is um, my background, so I'm uh, not just coming from the academia, I'm also coming from the business sector. Um, so uh, Evan Mills, uh, as I mentioned, he is a scholar that has been, uh, uh, he, he was actually when I was uh, starting my research uh, or reading the literature, this was the first name that came actually up when I was uh, talking about the, or reading about the insurance sector in the context of, of uh, environmental issues and climate change. And uh, he uh, recently, uh, there was, I found a re recent report uh, about uh, insurers, how they can uh, engage in green growth. Uh, and they, according to him, there are several ways for them. They can speed, uh, spread the, the cost of every, uh, every day as well as catastrophic losses, which is of course the core business uh, that otherwise represents a setback uh, to development efforts. So they can support uh, or, or spreading the uh, cost of risks. Um, also, they can offer innovative risk management products or services. Um, they can also provide influential input to public policy process and they have in some cases been active there as well. And also, also through investments uh, where they get direct their money is also an, an importance in the context of green growth. Um, so the implication for insurers, we only have to uh, look at a few pictures and it's easiest to, to uh, explain the link why, uh, for instance, uh, climate change or other issues that we can relate to uh, sustainability and green growth, uh, why it matters to the insurance sector. We only have to look at a few pictures to, to show the implication for the insurance sector. And also in terms of pollution and environmental liability. So this is why the insurance sector is actually in, interested in uh, this type of uh, issues. So um, 
all of these papers are based on, on my uh, PhD research and uh, the focus of the research was on the Nordic insurance companies with respect to environmental issues and climate change. And um, I looked at the biggest uh, companies in each of the Nordic countries uh, and there are four companies operating in Iceland, so I looked at also in the other countries, but some of them are big in more than one uh, country, so in total um, there were um, uh, there were 16 uh, companies that I included in my study. Uh, no, there's, there should be, there, there, there are two in each of these countries here, and then I, to have, um, I would say, fairer uh, results for the companies in Iceland because they are much smaller than I included companies that are operating in Holland and Faroe Islands. And in total, I interviewed 80 persons for the, for the research. Um, the aim of the first paper that um, I'm going to talk about or, or the research question that I, I proposed there was the, how does the concept of environmental sound technologies apply to the insurance industry? Um, and can the insurance sector enhance developments and utilization of such technolo technologies? And if so, how can they do that? So that was the aim. And to, to, then I had to, to deal with the, the, the concept or, or the term uh, environmental sound technology. What, what is it? And uh, the, the, con uh, the term that I found uh, useful was uh, in Agenda 21. And uh, what uh, I did in the paper was just to take this uh, concept and break it into pieces. And uh, so I, this is a graphical inter interpretation of uh, this concept. And we have the soft technologies at the top. And uh, so this is the know-how and the procedures and uh, everything that is uh, also a part of technology. And so when we talk about technology, we are not just talking about the uh, uh, something that uh, is functioning like uh, uh, we are just also talking about the knowledge and the know-how and the transfer of knowledge and such and the processes and the manage, uh, management and, and, and things like that and uh, then this was uh, the, the, a, a part of this concept was that uh, 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 environmental sound technology means uh, sustainable use of resources less pollution and less waste and then there were sub processes uh, here and uh, based on a, a statement that, that the Nordic insurance sector issued in 2009 on their role in terms of climate change, I uh, used that to figure out where actually if and where the insurance would fit into this uh, definition and that was done in this way here. So. Uh, the pink boxes here in this graph shows where, where in this paper we can actually fit uh, uh, actions of insurers into this uh, concept, how they could support this. So, um, and I'm not able to, to go into this, but uh, uh, for instance, in, in sustainable use of resources, they can focus on their own operation, op operations, but also in terms of loss prevention, uh, how they prevent losses means that we, we use less resources afterwards. We don't have to use resources if we can pre prevent losses. And also in the claim settlements, how uh, are things done? Uh, can we re review, uh, reuse things like uh, when we repair cars or such? Uh, or are we just buying al always new things? So this is how they, we could fit this into, uh, or fit the role of insurers into this uh, terminology. Um, and also, uh, on this side we have uh, the statement uh, or, or topics from the statement issued by the Nordic uh, insurance uh, companies in 2009, and they said uh, in terms of climate change they are going to focus on their own operation, that is the, how they run their offices, their own business, also in terms of investment. Um, how, where are they putting their money? Um, uh, new and existing products it means, for instance, um, uh, what are the uh, what type of um, insurance terms are, are they developing in terms of new technology that is being uh, developed? Uh, for instance, they mentioned uh, uh, 
like when when the windmill uh, sector was started they were the one that were taking the risk in, in ensuring such uh, new technologies and solar cells and whatever but also this means that they are may, might be offering better terms of on electric cars uh, or whatever so um, but also they have a really important role in terms of loss prevention and claim settlements and they also promised that they would uh, benchmark best practices and follow up continuously on what the sector is doing. And then we could uh, actually find found uh, in, in this paper examples of, uh, in terms of all the, those categories, in most cases we could actually find found examples uh, that could fit into this, these categories. Uh, like, uh, except maybe in follow up and benchmark that uh, was, uh, we could not find very much examples in the interviews uh, about this. So the conclusion of this first paper was that insurance uh, size can be leveraged to promote the use of environmental sound technologies. Um, and uh, by schematizing the Agenda 21 definition, uh, it ha did we, in this paper we demonstrated how this applies to the insurance industry. Um, and we also found that there's a gap in the academic literature with respect to low polluting sectors. Uh, the, uh, the academia has mainly been focusing on heavy polluting industries, uh, multinational companies, so there's actually a lack of uh, uh, literature on uh, low polluting sectors and small and medium sized enterprises, uh, enterprises, which uh, comes for, uh, forth in another paper that I'm uh, will introduce. And there has been a narrow focus on the role of manufacturers and heavy polluting firms alone, uh, and this restricts potential actions to address environmental issues by utilizing technologies. So this is a one way to scale up if we can actually also bring to the table the non-polluting uh, actors. Uh, the second paper is um, about how can we transfer the linear insurance business model into a closed loop insurance model. Uh, and what I was struggling here with is that uh, quite many of the interviewees and also in the literature was mentioned that uh, um, the insurance sector is a low polluting sectors, uh, sector, but uh, they usually didn't mention the, the impact from claims. So that's a huge impact uh, in terms of claims and that was usually not brought forth in, in this context. So the aim of this paper uh, was to use scientific and industry in literature and interview data from the Nordic non-life insurance sector uh, to propose a closed loop insurance model instead of a tradi traditional uh, linear insur insurance model. So this is a very uh, simple way, a really simple way to explain uh, the insurance model. So it starts with an application when people are, are um, want to buy or people or, or companies, if we are looking at this from uh, the industry side, uh, they want to uh, have an insurance. Uh, then this go through an underwriting and policy design within the insurance sector. Then the, a policy is issued if the people agree on the terms and the conditions and the, the premiums. And then there's a premium payment and if there's a no, uh, no claim, then, then it goes into uh, issuing or on invoice. And this is like a loop uh, if there is no claim. But if a claim occurs, then uh, we would start a new process. And what uh, was in this, uh, I would say, what the, this model here shows, uh, in, in this model, if you look at the previous one, uh, all the, the steps in this process have been in the next uh, next model. They are all just put here. So this, this is the core activities uh, and this is the renewal uh, loop. Uh, what this model is also showing that the, the insurance uh, sector, it needs energy and water for the, for the core activities, but also uh, for all the, the materials that are bought. This is what they knew, uh, used directly, but also through everything that they buy for their operation. So this is uh, bought through some sort of su suppliers. And then on the other side, there's waste and emission from the office. So this is a very simple process showing uh, only the office activities. But what is missing from this is uh, the impact of claims. 
So what was done in this was just to add a few boxes to show that, of course, this is missing from the previous slide, that uh, there are claim suppliers that also need energy, water and raw materials, and there's also a lot of uh, waste and emission from claims. And then in this paper, what uh, is done, and this is uh, too complicated uh, to explain here, but we have uh, the, the loop with the white boxes shows the insurance process uh, by itself, and then the other, the gray loop is the claims process. And uh, this, and also it shows that there is, of course, um, use of energy, water, and, uh, and uh, other types of resources, and also there's a waste and emission. And this is just, I think, this is just the first way to, to, to show that we need to link both the insurance uh, process, to try to change it from a linear process into more like a clo uh, loop thinking, where we can actually start focusing on where could we reduce the impact from uh, the insurance operation and also the impact uh, from claims. So this paper is focusing on, on this. So the highlights and conclusion of this paper was that environmental impacts of claims are often excluded in insurers linear business models and the closed loop business models are usually not proposed for non-manufacturing industries. And that is something that we also have to, to think about. We also have to think about because there might be also like a part of a bigger uh, value chain. Um, and also that the, the extensive network of insurers can be utilized to drive down environmental impacts of claims um, and that closed loop thinking can be applied in order to transform the linear ins uh, insurers business model. And the third paper was focusing on the role of insurance sector in fulfilling climate commitments. And there was a hypothesis uh, that the insurance sector has a critical role to play and that it assumes uh, responsibility for dealing with climate change challenges. And what was done here is there's a, a table here with, um, uh, this is uh, based on the, the literature about the role of insurers in terms of mitigation and adaptation. And uh, in terms of mitigation, there was, uh, we, we could find, find examples about uh, actions in terms of their core activities in terms of investments and in terms of their own operations and on the other side also actions related to their uh, core activities their investments and their role in transfer of technology they are uh, experts in risk um, and they can increase the deploy deployment of technology which then i go back to the other paper that was issued um, and so, so this is uh, just to, to show you from the literature and uh, uh, also in this paper the, the focus was on actions uh, of insurers uh, around this, uh, the, this statement that the, the Nordic sector issued in 2009 about their critical role. And uh, by putting this in, into a matrix, the adaptation and mitigation works, uh, versus internal actions, where they are focusing on their office activities, and then external actions, um, that the high impact of insurers is not in their own operations, but it is in when they, uh, in terms of claims and other uh, activities. That is where they have huge impact. And this is also uh, where we could mark examples. There's a, a big table in this uh, paper about uh, concrete uh, actions that are mentioned, but uh, we could, uh, in most of the categories, find uh, found examples in terms of mitigation, ad adaptation, and joint mitigation and adaptation in terms of their uh, internal actions, product and services, claims and loss prevention, investments, and also uh, what is also important, how they can influence uh, various stakeholders. So the conclusion of this paper was that they can actually be a powerful allies when fulfilling climate commitments um, and that we found uh, in, uh, or in this paper that they have also demonstrated a willingness uh, and role in assuming responsibility for dealing with climate change. Um, and there are different types of barriers also for actions uh, mentioned in the paper. 
and also um, the expected contribution of climate commitments of the industry is more extensive uh, than demonstrated in insurance rea reality. Uh, so they actually, like IPCC and others, they mentioned the role of the insurance, but uh, the actions is maybe not uh, as evident as we would like to see. And the last paper, uh, it explores uh, a framework that was uh, published in uh, uh, a paper uh, or, or a report from Geneva Association and the Geneva Association is an uh, association of uh, insurance leaders. The members of the Geneva Association are CEOs of 90 biggest insurance companies in the world. And they issued a report in uh, 2009, uh, I think, and they have a framework for climate change actions uh, and it was used uh, in this paper. And this is the framework. So they they cut or use these uh, categories that insurance companies, in terms of climate change actions, they are inactive, reactive, proactive, developed, or integrated. And uh, for instance, if we just look at the first category, uh, if they are inactive, they have uh, the understanding of social and environmental impacts of business is limited, and efforts to address climate change do not exist. And then they. If they are reactive, they have uh, some awareness, but uh, limited efforts, they are still reactive and so forth. So this is uh, a way for the, uh, for the suggestion that Geneva Association mentioned that could be used to evaluate the actions of insurance companies. Uh, but they actually they have not used this uh, framework themselves, uh, so I thought it was interesting to use the data to, to see if we could actually fit uh, into this. But this uh, framework was then used at a, a Nordic um, conference in, that took place in Nordic insurance conference that took place in 2009. And this was just in, impression of the people taking part in the conference. And at that time, they thought that uh, um, mostly insurance companies were uh, reactive with respect to climate change actions. And uh, some of them were uh, uh, proactive, but none would be have fully integrated this into their operations. I could actually find in my uh, interview data evidence of much uh, that the sector is moving up this uh, uh, the categories that have been identified. So this is just an example about the small and medium-sized insurance companies in in uh, the study. I, I split them up into two groups. The companies in. Iceland, Faroe Islands, and Orland, and then the bigger companies. And uh, the, the only examples that I could find in the smaller insurance companies was that the smaller companies are inactive and reactive, while the bigger companies have uh, moved further up the scale. And these are examples of quotations uh, that they are uh, inactive, and this is why I categorized uh, the answers there. When I asked about actions, they said, no, we have not started yet. There's no uh, environmental policy. We have not been working in the context of climate change we, and such. So this is an example of inaction. Uh, and then uh, uh, that they have limited capacity, but they're still trying to do something and such. So these are examples of that they are still reactive. Um, so the conclusion of this paper was that the uh, insurers must deal strate strategically with climate change issues and that this framework can actually be used to assess climate change actions uh, in companies of different size, but uh, it re requires a mi minor, re uh, re um, yeah, uh, we have to uh, uh, yeah, fix this a little bit and that there's a suggestion in the paper on how to do it. Um, and uh, there are examples that integration of, for instance, climate change actions are in, uh, integrated into the day-to-day -day business. There are examples of such actions. And that small and medium-sized insurance companies, they lag behind uh, in these types of actions. Mm. Yeah, so this was the conclusions. And uh, if uh, I bring this together, uh, based on the findings of those four papers, it can be argued that the insurers have a role to play in enhancing development of green growth. 
uh, they can do this from uh, if you whether you look at this from uh, from climate change or, or environmental issues or all the types of, of uh, actions they actually have a role to play um, uh, not much work has been done on the pension fund but I have found that the uh, uh, this scholar, uh, it, there are a few scholars that have been focusing on the pensions, uh, pension fund and institutional investors with regards to climate change, both uh, actions and lack of actions. Uh, I also try to, to look at uh, Google uh, or, or use all the sources to find if I could find examples of green growth uh, in terms of uh, banks. And this was mainly uh, discussed in the context of the World Bank. Um, and, but there are also others that have mentioned this and uh, I have uh, the last name the here is, is Stine Bosse, she used to be a CEO of the, one of the biggest Nordic insurance companies, she is a now a board member of Allianz and she has a very, uh, I have been talking to her in a, a, a conference and she has a very strong take on the role of the banking in terms of uh, green growth uh, and sustainability. And uh, she said they are not up to the, the um, challenge yet to, to deal with those issues. But uh, so uh, just uh, I just uh, because one of the outcome of this would be perhaps a working paper or something. So this is just uh, when after going through this, my question is: uh, Would uh, discussion about the finance sector or the insurance sector? actually be a good contribution to a working paper. So I will go and uh, finish with that. Thank you.